Hi, this is Doc B, and I wanted to uh, do some examples coming to you live from uh, Mount Rushmore here of some lab based problems. It, it, a lot of questions on these from students. Um, like, how do you go about them? What, what's kind of the gist of these things? And generally, um, lab based problems, whether it's in, in a class, on an AP exam, or even in real life, how, how do scientists do their work? Um, often what we need to do is, is to try and set up graphs. We want to plot data measurements that you get from an experiment such that you can extract a value of maybe an acceleration or a speed or a spring constant or something like that, um, some, a constant of proportionality that, that we use in science. How do you use data to do that? How do you use graphs to do that? So sometimes you are just given data and you, you have, you're asked, what graph would you make? Um, other times, sometimes you have to set up an experiment. Um, they'll, they'll tell you you have certain equipment, design an experiment, you know, think of measurements that you would need to extract the result that you're after. So I want to give three examples of these. Okay. And the first one is, is something that the College Board gave for the 2020 um, practice problem, okay, lab practice problem for the AP exam. And it's a basic setup like this. Um, it's a ramp that, that you, you hook up and you, know, you can vary the angle of that ramp. It, and you have a spring that's supporting some mass, a little cart or something, so you don't have to worry about friction here. And from this experimental setup, they want you to figure out and get an experimental value of the acceleration of gravity, okay. a little g. Where do you start? You know, that, that's what they give us. Um, we assume that we know the mass, we know the spring constant, we know there's no friction to worry about. But that's about it. Where's little g gonna come from, from this mess? Well, think about what you know. Think about what we, what we know about springs and hills. Um, we know that if, if you attach a mass and let it go, some portion of gravity is gonna make you try to go down the hill. The spring's gonna slow you down. What if you let it stretch the spring out to the point where it stops the mass and it just sits there? What if you have equilibrium? Now that's something that we can do. And by balancing forces, okay, if we think of the force diagram on hills, mg sine theta is always the downhill part. The only other force along the hill that the block is gonna feel is the spring pulling up on it. Well, if you let it go to equilibrium where it's just sitting still, those two forces have to be balanced. So if you can get some kind of little formula like this, now we can go after the thing we're trying to find. Okay, if, if we're going after the, the acceleration due to gravity, let's solve for it. Okay. Now the, the K over M, those are just numbers, that's a constant. But the, the stretch of the spring and the angle, okay, sine of the angle, those are the things that we can measure experimentally. If we need to make a graph for this, here's the trick. If we want, if we want to try to linearize a graph where the slope of, of that line is going to give us the result that we're after, okay, think rise over run. That's going to tell you what the graph should look like. So my rise, the, the y-axis, what if we put the stretch distance of the spring on that axis? The run, or x-axis, what if we put the sine of the angle of the hill down there? Now for the experiment, yeah, we, we, can, we can vary the angle. It is however many different angles that you want. And then we can measure the corresponding stretch of the spring to so have equilibrium. And then I suppose for, for whatever angles we used, we could find the signs of those angles. And boom, if we did that for four or five different angles, we'd have four or five different points that we could place on the graph. Now, just like what, what happens in class in, in any experiment at any level, 
now you, these data points aren't going to line up perfectly with each other. We would either use a computer or calculators or, or even by hand, if, if you're taking a test or something, and sketch in your best fit line. Okay. The slope of that line is the rise over the run. If we just multiply it by whatever that constant is out front, k divided by m, some number, um, that should give us an experimental value of little g. Okay. But it, it, you know, think of this process. We, we have to think in terms of physics principles, the basics, okay, the fundamentals. Um, in this case, we could use equilibrium, just balancing forces in Newton's laws. You get an expression for what you're trying to find. Think about your measurements and how that compares to rise over run so that we can make a linear graph where the slope of that graph helps us find the result that we're after. A different experiment you could do to try to find the um, acceleration due to gravity is just drop something, okay, free fall. It means to be the simplest type. We can measure the height that we drop it from. We can measure the time. Well, how, how do you extract little g from that? Well, if we ignore air friction, which typically, you know, that, that's a pretty safe assumption for most things. Um, we, we know that gravity is going to give you a constant acceleration. Constant acceleration lets us use kinematics equations. So if, if we use maybe the distance equation, one, you know, the distance is 1 half at squared. You have initial speed multiplied by time, and then you have your, your initial height. Well, if you're dropping things from rest, that second term we don't have to worry about. If we're trying to find the acceleration due to gravity, let's go ahead and solve for it. Um, if the ground is zero, if that's your zero height, we'll have zero on the left side. So if you solve for little g, It'll look something like two times the original height you dropped it from, divided by the time it takes to fall squared. Okay. That, that's like a theoretical prediction. That, that's the model, the mathematical model that we're using for this. Think in terms of rise over run if we need to make a graph. If we plotted either the, just the initial height, or I suppose we, we, could, we could plot points that two times the original height on the y-axis. And if we plotted times squared on the um, x-axis, we could do a bunch of different heights, get different times for each of those. That would give us some data points. If we sketch out and find our best fit line, the slope of that line rise over run would be the, the experimental value that we have for the acceleration due to gravity. Okay. Last one, something different. What if we wanted to use a collision, maybe like on an air track or something in, in a high school lab. It collides with a spring and it's going to compress it. What if we wanted to find the spring constant? Well, just to make it look more complicated, you could even have a collision. You know, maybe, maybe a little little uh, glider crashes into a second glider and they stick together, and then they move and they crash into the spring. Well, experimentally, if we have something like a photogate, we could directly measure that final speed of, of the two objects as they move into the spring, or if it's a, fl a flat track, a constant speed, um, we, we could do something as simple as um, a meter stick and a stopwatch. Okay, just distance over time, we could figure out and measure that speed of the blocks. But now with the collision with the spring, um, if it's a, a massless spring, if we make an assumption like we usually do in, in high school labs in particular, we could use energy conservation, I suppose. Where before the collision, you, you have the kinetic energy of, of those blocks that are stuck together with the speed that we measured. 
And where does that energy go? If you let it compress the spring so that everything stops, that means all of your energy would go into the spring, okay, that the elastic potential energy of the spring. What are your measurements? Well, we, we can measure the speed and then we can measure that compression distance. Okay, if we're after the spring constant, solve for it. Okay, the halves drop out. We would have whatever the, the, the mass of the things are that are colliding with the spring times the speed squared over the compression distance squared. Okay, let's see if you get in the hang of this. What would you plot to get a straight line? Rise over run. Well, we have speed squared on top. That'll be our rise. We have x squared in our denominator. That could be our run. If you varied, had, had different speeds crashing into it and measured the compression distance, this particular graph should give a, a straight line as a best fit. Okay. If, if that's all we plotted, the slope of that line would be this ratio of v squared over x squared. Multiply that by the mass, and boom, you've got the spring constant of the spring. You determine that experimentally. So I hope, I hope these examples kind of give you the gist of this. You want to think of a, a math model. Maybe, maybe they give you one in a problem. Maybe we, we have to figure one out using you know, basic ideas of physics. And so usually it's just either forces or energy. And that's usually all we have to work with. Um, solve for the thing that you're trying to find and think about how can we use the measurements to give us rise over run, to give us a straight line on a particular graph. And the slope of that graph will help you find a value of, of the parameter or, or the constant, um, the quantity that you're looking for. So I do hope this helps. And until next time, uh, we'll, we'll see you later.